LEGO has done a few things differently this time with the Dungeons & Dragons minifigure series compared to what we usually expect. First, the usual base on which the figures stand has been enhanced with a rock print. While this doesn't add much visually, it fits well with the theme. Second, five of the figures come with both male and female heads. These are all characters that can be player characters and are humanoid. LEGO demonstrates a good understanding of a pen and paper role-playing game license here, just as they did with the Red Dragon's Tale. As usual, the box contains 36 figures. LEGO has for once, however, distributed them evenly. Each figure is included exactly three times. Dungeons & Dragons, developed in 1974, is the first pen and paper role-playing game and revolutionized the high fantasy genre. Unlike traditional board games or strategy games where players control pre-made characters, D&D allowed players the freedom to create individual characters and guide them through an open imaginative world. D&D laid the foundation for many modern role-playing systems. Numerous digital role-playing games like Baldur's Gate or Neverwinter Nights use D&D mechanics and worlds. Other mainstream RPGs such as The Elder Scrolls or Final Fantasy are inspired by the principles D&D introduced, particularly in character development and open world design. D&D has been featured in many movies, series and books. It plays a central role in Stranger Things and also appears in other films like E.T. or modern series like Community. It is often seen as a symbol of creativity, imagination and nerd culture. D&D has been adapted into films multiple times with varying success. However, the 2023 movie Dungeons and Dragons Honor Among Thieves was received more positively. All that being said, let's start with the protagonists, the potential player characters in the group. The Dwarf Barbarian comes with two hats, dual molded arms, fantastic prints on the torso and arms and a new axe piece. It's a great addition to the high fantasy weapon collection. I hope LEGO will use this mold more often in the future. The legs are luckily the movable version, though not printed. LEGO once again didn't make these short legs as dual molded pieces. A version with brown boots would have been nice. Githyanki are a D&D creation likely familiar to general public through their significance in Baldur's Gate 3. The first trailers for the game revolved around Lazel, a Githyanki. Interestingly, LEGO chose not to give the Githyanki warlock an olive green or medium nougat hat, but instead went with the classic yellow. It's the only figure in the series with this color, likely chosen to add variety to the group. The figure also comes with two hats, fantastic prints on the torso and legs, a new dagger mold and a cool print for the staff hat. The Tiefling Sorcerer includes everything LEGO has to offer. Again, two hats, a new dragon, a new lighting spell effect, a new dual mold hairpiece, new dual mold legs and wonderfully detailed prints on the arms, torso and legs. Personally, I'm not a big fan of the tailpiece as the attachment creates an unsightly line at the hips. Of course, it can be left off. Aside from that, there is nothing to criticize about this figure. A non-humanoid paladin makes the hearts of old D&D veterans beat faster, reminiscent of Dragonbait from Curse of the Azure Bonds. However, here we have a Dragonborn wearing a re-release of the head from the Metal Dragon from the video series. Though video was kind of a flop for LEGO, the dragon is now being traded for over 30 euros, showing how hungry the LEGO fantasy community has been in recent years. The same is true for the Dragonborn Alex Jade Scales from the Red Dragon's Tail set. Our protagonist here comes with a gold hat with a new print and new armor that combines two known armor designs. The fantastic piece can easily be used on other figures and there is a great print underneath as well. The legs also feature full printing including side prints, unfortunately kind of a unique feature inside this series for this figure. Halflings, or hobbits as they are called in Lord of the Rings, are an important part of the genre. With a druid, LEGO has opted for a rather exotic class choice though. A new helmet mold complements this choice along with dual molded legs and a new cloak. The leather hides a fantastic back print so can be easily given to another figure. The bird is new in terms of its color print mix while the staff is more kind of a standard fare. Dark orange is a fantastic color for minifigures and our Arakokra Ranger demonstrates this beautifully. Together with the well-printed legs, the completely new head and wings create a charming ensemble. The bow is new in this color. This successful overall look is created by the high quality individual parts and clever color choices. Cool prints round out the appearance, a particularly clever detail. The hips were colored to match the torso instead of the legs, making the figure look more cohesive. 
A new half hairpiece was my first thought when I unpacked the Bard. And that's just the beginning. We have a cheerful elf, refreshingly different from Tolkien's melancholy elves, kind of. I find the figure visually pleasing in addition to the hairpiece and the two friendly hats, including a singing face variant, that's so cool. There's a colorful torso and dual molded legs. The prints on the torso and legs are fantastic as well. The real highlight, however, is the loot, which Lego has never printed so beautifully before. My my compliments to the LEGO graphic designers. Now let's come to the non-player characters. First we have the Mind Flayer. Things are getting spooky with the Mind Flayer, undoubtedly one of the most iconic monsters in the Dungeons and Dragons universe. It is well known to the wider public as an antagonist in Baldur's Gate 3 by Larian Studios. LEGO has given the Mind Flayer a new hat, perfectly capturing this psionic race. The robe is simpler in its color choice, but it's extensively printed, including the arms and back of the skirt. Then there is the Devourer, which can be placed on a minifigure's hat and is sure to excite more than just D&D fans. It inevitably brings to mind Half-Life or Alien Associations. One of the few named characters is Strat von Zarovich, who resides in Shadowfell and is featured or referenced in various parts of the franchise. In 2016, he received his own adventure with Curse of Strat. The figure comes with dual molded legs, a fantastic printing ensemble including arms and hips and a paint transition between the arms and back with the fur lined shoulder cape. This is something I've never noticed Lego doing before, like all print transitions on minifigure parts. It's not perfect, but I like the idea. The red isn't as spectacular as many of the other accessoires in the series but comes in a new color with a darker print. Overall this is a very well done vampire with a great combination of colors and prints. He should pair well with the vampire knight from the series 25. The Lady of Pain was the face of the Planescape campaign setting in the second edition at once Dungeons & Dragons, which is also how I first encountered the game in the late 80s. LEGO has done a great job capturing the character with the color combination of orange and sand green. The helmet is a true masterpiece and of course new. It's made from the rubber material LEGO sometimes uses, which should give it a good durability. She has a new cloak and holds one of her portals in hand, a neat print that also comes as a separate piece. Unfortunately, the figure lacks printed arms but the other prints are well done. Especially impressive is the color matching between the sand green on the torso print and the headpiece. That doesn't always work so well with LEGO. The Lich Zastam was essentially the antagonist of the movie Honor Among Thieves, though he remained more in the background there. However, LEGO doesn't seem to have based the design on the movie as the exposed bones on the torso print show. The Lich comes with stylish prints, though overall it is the simplest figure in this series. The skull in trans red is new in this color. Trading card games also make an appearance in this lineup. Makes sense as Dungeons & Dragons has long been owned by Wizards of the Coast. Tasha the Witch Queen is a card from Magic the Gathering, specifically from the Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate expansion, a crossover between Magic and D&D. This figure wraps up the series with a big bang. She features dual molded legs, stunning prints even on the arms and a matching new color combination for the dual molded headpiece. The printed book is particularly outstanding, something LEGO unfortunately does far too rarely, too often stick Stickers are used for this part. Even Arwen didn't get a printed book in Rivendell. This is by far the best minifigure collectible series from LEGO that I've ever held in my hands. Rarely has Billon put so much effort into a series. A wealth of new animals, hats, accessoires, fantastic prints on the figures themselves and a well-chosen ensemble of player and non-player characters. The character selection is remarkably well done, clearly LEGO was very well advised by Wizards of the Coast. The antagonists in particular offer a comprehensive overview of D&D fandom, the Mind Flayer with its significance in Baldur's Gate 3, Strat von Sarovic as the antagonist in a pen and paper adventure from the current D&D edition, the Lady of Pain representing the breakthrough of the genre in the 80s with the second edition, Zaz Tam as a reference to the first successful film adaption of the genre and a figure from a trading card game, I mean it's all there. I've refrain from giving individual ratings to the figures as most of them deserve top marks. The dwarf's legs are a bit underwhelming and I would have liked more side printing on the legs in general, otherwise there's virtually nothing to criticize here. Zaz Tam is a bit simple but 
but that fits the source material. If you consider this series as a set, along with Rivendell, it's the best LEGO has released in recent years. Dungeons and Dragons has had a lasting impact on the role-playing game genre and remains an essential part of pop culture. It has not only the defined the world of pen and paper games, but also inspired countless video games, movies and books. LEGO's 71047 minifigures Dungeons & Dragons lives up to this legacy. High fantasy LEGO fans can't really complain right now, at least not about the quality of the products, though there could certainly be more of them. Thanks for watching.